your skin burning every time you left the house. Imagine droughts and wildfires occurring on a daily basis. These were some of the effects I talked about in my last speech when I was talking about worst case scenario for climate change. But what actually is climate change? The first, term, the first time I heard about the concept, I was way back in third grade when I was learning about the greenhouse effect. And ever since then, I've heard it countless times. We constantly see it on TV and the news about how bad it is, how bad it's going to get. But today I want to talk about what it actually is and how we know it's happening. This is an important topic to talk about because, for one, it's a topic that's thrown around a lot and it'd be nice to get some clarity on the subject. And two, it's important because it affects everyone. Climate change is negatively affecting Earth, which is everyone's home. So today I'm going to be talking to you about what climate change is, how we know that it's happening, and some of the consequences about climate change. So what is climate change? Climate change is the global increase in temperature of the Earth. I'll start by explaining some common misconceptions explained from the scientific article posted by climate researchers Ian Thacker and Gail Sinatra. One, climate change is long-term. Climate, by definition, is weather occurring over a long period of time. So let's say we have some really cold weather for a week or two. This, doesn't, this isn't going to serve as counter evidence to climate change happening. Two, most people think climate change is affected by visible pollution and smog, when in reality the greenhouse effect, which, which is climate change, the greenhouse effect has mechanisms that are invisible to the naked eye, so those won't affect climate change. Three, people think that climate change is related to holes in the ozone layer, which is false. And four, people think climate change is an ongoing debate between scientists, when in reality most scientists actually agree on what climate change is. Climate change is mostly due to human activities. The greenhouse effect is the main ingredient in climate change. This is where greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane are trapped by the atmosphere and release heat back onto the earth. As you can see by this image that visualizes it, which you've probably all seen since elementary school, the atmosphere is trapping these greenhouse gases. These gases themselves were relatively constant on our planet till about the 20th century in which people started burning fossil fuels which releases a large amount of carbon dioxide. So now that we know that what climate change is, how do we know that it's happening? I'll start with some obvious examples. If you look at about 18,000 years ago, at the start of the end of the Ice Age, the ice sheets from the North Pole came down to as low as Pennsylvania. This is when natural climate change took over. The Earth changed in orbit and tilt, which caused more carbon dioxide to be released from oceans which sped, how, sped up the greenhouse effect and melted these ice sheets. It's also obvious when you look at the climate of the Earth versus the Moon. Temperatures on the Moon can get up to 250 degrees during the day and negative 380 at night. Obviously on Earth we're not dealing with hundreds of degrees, but it begs the question, why isn't the Earth so cold at night when we don't have sunlight? This is because the Moon has no atmosphere that traps these greenhouse gases, and we do, which is what warms us at night. There's also some statistical evidence to see that climate change is happening today. As we know, greenhouse effect is what causes climate change, and with the increase of greenhouse gases, this speeds up this climate change and increases its effect. Like I said, at the beginning of the 20th century, during the industrial era, people started burning fossil fuels, which became the, new, the world's new source of energy. There was an exponential increase in carbon dioxide, as you can see from this graph from NASA. It was relatively constant until about the 20th century in which this increase occurred. And according to climate researcher Majdrag Mezarovic, scientists estimate that humans emit carbon dioxide 10,000 times faster than natural processes have done in the past. And it goes on to say that there's a close correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature, where carbon dioxide has a strong control over the global temperature. Climate change is also evident if you look at the temperature itself. Mezarovic estimates that the temperature has increased by about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 115 years, which has also been the warmest century in modern history. So now that we know what's happening, we see the temperatures increasing, what's the big deal with a couple extra degrees every century? Climate change was, comes with some big side effects. There are physical effects like droughts and heat waves. NASA predicts that droughts in the second half of this century in the Western United States and Midwest are going to be longer and drier than anything we've seen in the past a thousand years. This will be detrimental to agriculture, which will shrink our food supply greatly. And also we'll see some effects in the oceans. 
NASA estimates that the sea level will rise by 1 to 4 feet by 2100. This will cause severe flooding and will be detrimental to coastline cities especially. Also, hurricanes will be stronger. Scientists estimate that storm intensity and rainfall are estimated to rise as the planet gets warmer. This will cause more hurricanes and cause them to be stronger. But there are also economic effects to climate change as well. Economist Marcus Painter did a study on the connection between climate risk of climate change and the issuance of municipal bonds to counties, which, is, which are loans by cities and states for counties for infrastructure like new roads, new parks, stuff like that. He found that a 1% increase in climate risk, which was measured by expected average annual loss from sea level rise as a percentage of GDP, that 1% is associated with an average rise in total annualized issuance costs of $1.7 million for the average county. This means that if you live a certain distance away from the ocean, you have a certain climate risk that your county can get things like new roads, new bridges, new parks. Also, farmers and grocers will suffer. Like I said, agriculture will suffer from droughts, which will cause most farmers to go out of business, and grocers like Walmart will have less suppliers, and they, wouldn't, they won't be able to sell as many products and be as successful. These consequences are what make climate change so urgent today. So, in conclusion, I've talked to you guys about what climate change is, how we know that it's happening, and some of the consequences of climate change. Climate change is a scientific process in which our Earth gets warmer over time. We can see this through stats like the presence of greenhouse gases and also global temperature itself. And we also see the consequences of it. We see physical as well as economic consequences, which is what makes climate change such an urgent risk today.